And one of the things that I'd like to say before we continue with the plan, Stan, is that um, I really appreciate you guys calling. Before you called, I was feeling tired. I was laying down, almost having a nap. And then you called, and I says, all right, it's a student. I'll do it. <laughs> And to now, I'm really glad that I did. And I thought I'd mention that. Taking the right effort and a few minutes later, getting the value out of it. Because now I've got all the energy that I didn't have when I was laying saying that I'll take care of it laying on the bed. <laughs> got the <Right>. mojo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. And it had to do with events. So there will be events. But if there are no events, just like laying there in the bed, you're laying there or th sitting there or whatever posture you're in there, thinking about the money as if it was something heavy, something that had to be dealt with. And while we're doing that, the example that I'll use here is, is this, this cup, about half full of coffee right now. The question is, is this cup heavy. Now notice that I didn't ask how much it weighed. I asked basically the question, how heavy is it? That's the question that gets people confused. How heavy is this cup? Well, you need something to compare it to in order to call it heavy. Pardon? You would need something to compare it to, right? All right. In order to call it How heavy? about comparing the cup to when I first pick it up versus picking it up and holding it like this intentionally for more than one minute? Is it more heavy now than it was when it was first picked up? No. Huh? No. Well, what does the word heavy mean? I didn't ask how much it weighed. I asked how heavy. Maybe I can sing you the song about he ain't heavy, he's my brother. And now we'll begin to understand what I'm talking about. How heavy is this cup? <laughs> the answer is, is the longer you hold it, the more heavier it gets. Mm. Is this not true? It's true. Ah, okay. So now that I've got that, that this cup's getting heavy, I'm going to change its posture. There. Now guess what? The cup was first nourishing, and then it wasn't heavy anymore. So, that same sequence can have money on the mind. The money gets heavy when we keep thinking about it over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so, the whole teaching of the Buddha is let's lighten up instead. Let's recognize when things are heavy and set them down mentally. Okay. So, in, in that regard, we can now say, use the word heavy for unsatisfactory, that it would be satisfactory if it were light, right? If I could just hold that cup there for a long time, years, years and years, on into, you know, explosions of suns and mergers of cosmos, and I could still hold that cup there, <laughs> all right? But the fact is, is that everything is temporary. Everything gets heavy. So we have to set down most everything. And so this is what we're actually practicing in a way, is to recognize that some things are satisfactory for a while, but then they begin to get heavy. This is one of the qualities of understanding the difference between a wholesome and an unwholesome thought. There's actually the thought to be the same thought, but now it's unwholesome. 
And so having thoughts of money becomes unwholesome the second time around. And um, do they get unwholesome because we, we thought there was a inherent satisfaction in the money? And then the more we think about it, the more we realize um, there is not what we are looking for. Uh, why do they become, you know, uh, um, unwholesome with time? Well, actually, you've made a point. There is some satisfaction in worrying. Mm. That people do take advantage in worrying. That in fact, one of the things, the advantage is, is so long as I'm worried about it, I don't have to do anything about it. I can just sit here and feel worried. Because if I didn't worry, then I would either have to go do it or fail. And I'm afraid of failure. So I'd rather worry about it. And so we do find advantages in worry. That's just one possibility. Think about it rather than do it. But there's also the possibility of thinking about it in the sense of confusion. I keep thinking about it because if I think of it, I keep thinking about it, I'll eventually figure it out. Right? Okay, so the hope is there for that. But I have heard it blamed on Einstein, but I'm not sure where it came from. It's the quotation of, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting new results, that's a case of insanity. And yet that's how most people practice meditation, whatever it is. They're not <laughs> making changes. That's what this practice is all about, is making changes and stop doing the things that are heavy. Stop doing the things that are unwholesome. Stop rec start to recognize when something that we were light with now becomes heavy and it's time to set it down. So, but setting it down, does it mean like changing external stuff or also, set, I, I mean, I, I get that you set it down in your mind, you just drop it. But you also make... have a new thought, change it around. Notice that the first thing that I did with that coffee cup after it became heavy was finally take a sip and recognize that the coffee was still warm. The warmth of the coffee and all of that. So I was in the present moment for that. And then as I was moving the cup, there was a slight sensation of pain in this part of the arm for having had it there for a while. And so as I was setting it down, I was then relieved of having now set the cup down, that pain is gone. And in fact, it is gone now. So look at all of that kind of stuff that happened that most people are not paying any attention to. So what we're practicing is to wake up and look at what we're doing, moment by moment by moment by moment. And in fact, it took me a whole lot longer to describe what happened than it actually took in that movement of moving the hand to here and setting the cup down. That was probably two or three seconds. It took me 30 seconds to talk about it. So when we wake up, we look at what we're doing. We recognize when things are heavy, and then we can set it down in the sense of lightening it up. So the coffee cup's still sitting there, but now it's light. Doesn't weigh anything at all. Just like that money will become light when you're not thinking about it. When you start thinking about it, the more you think about it, the heavier it gets. Is this possible? I mean, you're, you're, you're studying, your eyes are moving back and forth. And I was wondering, does, is, does this fit for you? Is this possible? Well, yeah, it's possible, but... Um, All right. Let me ask you this way. Do you think a whole lot of people worry about money? Yes. <laughs> Almost yeah. everybody. <laughs> everybody, huh? 
almost everybody. Let us say uh, ordinary people do and most people do. You know why they worry about money? Because they don't think they've got enough. They won't know. And guess what? The amount of money that you have now is irrelevant to whether you've got a smile on or not. But you can smile just because you want to. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> <laughs> So we don't have to think about the money. We can think about something that brightens up, brightens our day, makes us feel good. Like this present moment is quite nice. This breath's good. Paying attention to what's real. Yeah, so I, I did that for another week. Huh? And um, I feel like I'm kind of suppressing or like avoiding or, or bypassing like the work stuff that I, I think I have to deal with at some point. Um, I think I, I can I can go on a little bit longer without dealing with it. Um, ah, but can you go a little bit longer and still worry about it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can you go a little longer and not worry? That's the difficult thing. All right. That's so the next is, is, can you go ahead and do it and continue to worry anyway? That's the easy thing. Uh, <laughs> or you can go ahead and do it and then not worry about it. What I'm drawing here is, in fact, the OK Corral. It's known as the OK Corral for several reasons. It's, been, it's got several different versions. But think of it as like window panes. You've got four window panes separated. I'm waiting for you to stop writing and start looking. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> okay. All right. So you get the idea of the window panes where you've got this version, and this version. All right. Now, the left and right <clears throat> is the question of whether we do it or not. Like whatever you're worried about, and whatever you're going to do with the money, you go do that. Or you don't do it. Those are the two choices. You either go do it or you don't do it. Now we have the horizontal, and that is down below, we feel bad, and above, we feel good. Our choice. Our choice as to whether we're going to do it or not, and our choice as to whether we're going to feel bad <clears throat> or not. Why is it that most people, especially those known to procrastinate, they don't do it and feel bad? <laughs> and now you're beginning to understand. All right. Guess what? You can not do it and feel good. A lot of people also do it and then they feel bad. And then there are those who do it and get a big kick out of it and enjoy doing it. These are the four possibilities. And we have that every time, every moment. We have the possibility of either doing the, uh, putting the cup down, twiddling our thumbs, putting our uh, middle finger under our nose and our index finger to our ear, or anything else. Whatever we're doing, you've got a choice about it. That is, either you do it or you don't do it, and you'll have a choice about whether you're going to feel bad or feel good about it. Now, the funny thing is, is that we've been taught all our lives to either do it or don't do it without looking at this whole point about feeling good or feeling bad, because we wind up in our society. Everybody either does or don't do it and feel bad. Recognizing now that it doesn't matter whether you do it or not. The question is, is how are you going to feel about it? Whether you do it or not. OK, but, but I have additional like. Um... Like I, I'd be fine doing it, but I have like my I think like that's this is what I'm not sure um, the ethics about it. Um, like the work that I used to do was just a, a programming job, but I don't feel like 
like I, I, I'm having a hard time between am I avoiding my responsibilities or, or is it really not 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 that ethical? I mean, it's just like it's just okay. That's that's a typical non-question. That's a typical irrelevant question. The reason that you're confused is because the question itself is irrelevant. The better question that you could have would be, how do I feel right now? Do I feel like that I'm confused about these questions that are irrelevant? Or am I going to sit here and feel good recognizing that I don't have to worry about irrelevant questions? <laughs> so why is this irrelevant? Well, because you're not doing anything about it right now. You're well, not on the back of a train contemplating jumping off. <laughs> All right. You're just sitting here worried about something that you don't have to bother worrying about. You can sit here and enjoy this conversation instead of figuring out things to worry about. <sighs> That's the whole point. The only way that you're going to feel good about whether you do it or not is to stop worrying about it. Because right now you're not going to do anything about it. Why worry about it now? Yeah. And since that's the case most of the time, that's going to eliminate most of the worry. Time to worry about it is when you're doing it. Clear example of that is emails. How many times have you wrote an email, but then you wrote it again the next day? Then you wrote it again the next day, and then you wrote it again, and now you've got a really fantastic version of it. And then you write it again the next day, all in the mind. And then the next day, you decide you're actually going to go write that email. But now you can't quite remember what it was that you thought was so hot diggity dog two days ago. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? That's the planning. The planning and the planning and the planning and the planning and planning to write that email and the email that we actually sit down and write is not the email of the planning. Often what will happen in that case is after we plan on writing an email several times, then we get yet another email from that guy or girl and now we write them quickly. Be damned what all of those thoughts were for three or four or five days. <laughs> got a new email because I've got a new question to answer or something. All right, so this is the kind of thing that happens all the time, that our plans often are irrelevant other than things to worry about, mind moments to waste. But you could be spending your mind moments enjoying the heck out of the fact that you're still alive. Yeah. It's true, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to worry about all of that stuff. Okay, but this is okay. But do it, but why like, worry about it? Like I get it, uh, but um, like that's the thing. It it's it it's a process of training the mind. Uh, like it's it's a process of training the mind of like just being in the here and the now and and dumping all unnecessary thoughts. And dealing with them whenever, um, but if the mind isn't well trained enough, it might be better to just do then it. There's more effort to it. There's more effort to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. This is why right noble effort is part of the path. The eightfold mm -hmm. noble path. Right noble effort, and that's the skill that needs to be developed first so that it's not so much hard work. Mm -hmm. And what is the effort? Is to stop the uh, crankiness, to stop the unhappiness, to stop the uncertainty, to stop the criticism, and to start brightening the mind, gladdening the mind, Nurturing the mind with thoughts about everything's all right right now. Everything is fine. I don't have to worry about anything. Everything's all right right now. Let's settle down. Let's feel at ease. Let's feel comfortable. 
to get okay. ourselves in a state that's worth of being in, of opening our eyes, opening our uh, feeling body, taking a deep breath and enjoying this present moment because I don't have to worry about all of those problems and worry that I'm such a habit of doing. We begin to practice this intentionally several times a day. Now, a lot of students begin to hear immediately the very beginner says, oh, I've got means I've got to go do it all the time. And that's not right effort. All, whenever we think of something as all the time, that's delusional in two ways. One, it, it makes things open-ended as if they were infinite and nothing is infinite. Everything dies. Everything changes. Nothing can last on and on and on. And so all the time also has the problem of uh, demanding yourself of something that you're not capable of doing right now anyway. So it's setting a standard or a bar too high, and we've been doing that our whole lives. We always want to improve by setting the bar higher than where we are instead of congratulating ourselves for where, the perch that we're on. So you can either climb your ladder unsatisfied because you're not yet at the level that you want to be. And when you get there, now you've got to go get to the next level, et cetera, like that. Or you can climb the thing, now I'm satisfied, and let me give this one a go. Yeah, I got that one too. So I can sit here and be satisfied. Oh, but I see that one. Let me go get that one. I can get that. And then we get it too. So are you going to climb your, your ladder of life to satisfy or satisfy? <laughs> okay, so that's that, that thing that we were talking about. It's your choice of how you feel. And you have determined that all your feelings are determined by your behavior, which is the law of karma, which is not necessarily the way that it works. All the law of forgiveness, oh, if I suffer enough and work really hard and try really hard and still I am a royal failure, then something's going to come along and pick me up, dust me off, and make me shiny and golden. Because I can't do it myself. So the money problem is actually just a metaphor for everything. That is, is that we need to take a few moments out several times a day and practice being okay, being satisfied. Being right where you are, congratulate yourself for being where you are, take a deep breath and relax. <sighs> Whatever you were thinking about a minute ago, you can let it go. And we do this for about five or ten minutes at a time. Can you keep it up for five minutes? Okay. Think about it in the sense you probably heard this someplace about uh, uh, practicing an hour a day of meditation. Have you ever heard of that? An hour? Yeah, you have, haven't you? Are you worth, is it worth an hour to you? An hour of happiness a day? Yes. You'd like that. Yeah. Okay, when I offer it that way, you're beginning to say yes to it, okay? But if you see it all as an hour of hard work and struggle, you're not going to get anything out of it but hard work and struggle anyway. But that's the way that many people approach meditation, thinking that it's hard work and struggle you feel anyway. But because you worked and struggled so hard, that something magical is going to come in and make it okay. But the way that we're practicing is make it okay first. And now let's check out the struggle, see what's there. 
the struggle isn't really there for me anymore. It, it's become quite. Pardon? The struggle isn't really there for me anymore. Okay. Um, well, sometimes, but mostly I, I do quite enjoy it. But sometimes oh, the effort... well, when it's there, let's not talk about when it's not there, because I would expect it to not be there all the time. You're not over in the corner sniveling and crying. You're not saying but, 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 but all the time. So I know that you're not there all the time. <laughs> you're listening. The question is, is not when it's not there. When it's not there, actually, the question would be, can you recognize that it's not there? In the sense that when it is there, you can recognize when it is there. When you are worried. When you are struggling. Because if you keep inspecting that, pretty soon you begin to see that some of the things right when you did it and recognize, no, nah, this is not struggling. Later, you come back to it and say, yeah, that is struggling. Let me even stop doing that much. So as your eye gets better, as your discernment gets better, because you keep practicing and making small changes here and there, you begin to see things differently. And so you, you start applying right effort there, too. And when things do look spick and span, then you say, hot dog, ah, got that one. Now, what we're talking about here is nothing but the Eightfold Noble Path. To wake up, to remember, look at what you're doing, polish it up a bit, and be pleased with what you got. That polishing it up a little bit, that's when it's right effort. In the case of money, oh, I don't have to worry about that right now, I'm okay. But then you do need to set a time to actually worry about it or fix it. No, you're going to worry about it. We need to set time when you're not worrying about it. <laughs> <laughs> you're already going to worry about it full time, you know that. So let's start taking time when you're not worried about it. So going back to that issue about the hour, let us say that it might be useful for you to break that hour into 12 five-minute groupings. And since you sleep a lot of the time, we're saying maybe take five minutes out of an hour, maybe four minutes. I don't care how long it takes, but it, uh, but out of every hour, can you at least remember to smile one time? Once an hour, can you remember to at least take a deep breath and relax? And to put that thought out of the mind, whatever I was worried about, I don't have to worry about it right now. This is my moment off. Or you might try it once every two hours or so, like that. It'll take 10 minutes. Take 10 minutes and just enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Don't have to think about or worry about nothing. That program that I'm writing, I can put that down right now and I can have a moment of peace and quiet and joy knowing that my mind will be fresh enough that when I go back to that coding, it'll be really easy. So taking time out over and over throughout the day, five, 10 minutes, get the mind cleaned up, bright, shiny, satisfied, safe, secure, comfortable, successful. Over and over again, keep looking for that, ah, this is good enough. I'm satisfied, I'm successful. And that's hard to do when I want, I want, I want, I want, or I gotta go, I gotta go, or I gotta do, I gotta do. 
So you come out of that for a little while every day. Don't worry about it. Now. Everything's all right. Everything's fine. No worries, mate. Okay. But I still kind of want to talk about like, like livelihood questions and ethics. Uh, well, let's do that once you've got a mind that's fit for work. You're wanting to ask questions that you don't have answers to. You need to get the mind fit for work and then the answers will be there and you don't have to think about it, worry about it. There are no ethical so, questions when your mind is noble. Yeah, but it takes a while to get my mind to be noble. Well, that's practice. That's so, what this so, is all about. But the thing is, like, <laughs> what if I practice and then I won't be able to fully or won't be able to get my mind to a decent level of nobility and then the money runs out and I'm completely shit, shit scared. That's a possibility, huh? It's going to run out in five minutes. Hey, what? It's going to run out in five minutes. What's going to run out in five minutes? Money. You just said the money's going to run uh, out. No, no, yeah. It's going to run out in the next five minutes. No. <laughs> then you need to have the thought the money's not going to run out in the next five minutes. Let me sit here and enjoy myself for the next five minutes. <laughs> And then the other 55 minutes of that hour, go run like you thought that your head was on fire or, or like you were running out of money or something. I don't know what you're going to do. I'm asking for five minutes to sit down and stop that stuff. Money's not going to run out in the next five minutes, I bet. Oh. So you need to continue. That should be your mantra. <laughs> and <the> mantra. <laughs> the money's not going to run out on the end breath in the next five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Money's not going to run out in the next five minutes. Oh, that's true. And so you can feel relaxed and secure for the next five minutes. After five minutes is over, with a great big happy smile on your face, you can get up and say, the money's not going to go get out in the next five minutes. Let me see what I can do in the next five minutes. So you do something in the next five minutes. And then for the next hour or so until you're waiting for your happy time again, there's nothing to do. <laughs> Life can be easy if you let it be easy because almost all of the time that you're spent worrying is unproductive and it's unwholesome. Mm -hmm. So continue to be just as um, productive as you've always been, except for this time when we are taking unproductive time and turning it into nothing to do, and that's okay. Take five minutes out. Or am I going to do something or am I not? So now is the time to be okay. Make yourself feel good. It's all right. You have my permission to feel good five minutes out of every hour. And the other 55 minutes, go back and do whatever you were doing before. But for five minutes, you have my permission. Or are you, uh, let's say, lingering on in the doubt with the kind of idea of, oh, but I can't.
can't afford five minutes out of every hour. I'm productive, not just 55 minutes, I'm productive 60 minutes out of every hour. I couldn't possibly lose five minutes and not lose production. Is that, is that the case? No, not really. I think I've gotten... Okay. Um, I think I've gotten quite good at just setting it down. Um, but then sometimes in the mornings, I get anxious a bit again. And um, Oh, well, that's that five-minute time to start. Yeah. Or maybe one minute before that. See it coming. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be worried but, within the next one minute. Let me sit down and uh, <laughs> But I do kind of have a feeling that it's leading me to maybe, I wouldn't say, like a bit more hedonism. Uh, what? A bit more hedonism. Hedonism? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've heard that word before. That means wanting something you don't have. Well, no, it's just a... But I didn't mean it that way. Just like... Um, just, I didn't. Uh, didn't. <laughs> eh? How did you mean it? Well, just that... Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just much more relaxed and spend my money more... kind of more easily and just do more fun things. Uh, Without really having like a plan. <laughs> well, if, if the you know plan what I mean. is to spend less money, then that's the plan. Oh, I don't need to buy that. I don't need to buy this. I don't need that. I'm satisfied and content without it. Let me not buy that. Pretty soon, money's not a problem. Wanting is the problem. Buying is the problem. Paying for it is the problem. Wanting it is really the problem. So if you don't want anything, then you don't buy much. Yeah, I noticed um, this a lot when practicing since uh, since you don't depend on uh, something or uh, someone or, or maybe the success of your uh, business to be happy then you you'd spend a lot less energy and money uh, throughout the day because you you're, um, create your own good feelings. So you don't need this outer uh, stuff. It kind of loses uh, importance, but uh, you can manage it uh, better because there is no, uh, it's not uh, important because you're not going to get any good feelings out of it. Um, I mean, you could not like it, but uh, you are doing the liking, if you know what I mean. Right. When we recognize that we like something because we choose to like it, and we want it because we choose to want it because we like it, then we can begin, first off, to take control over what it is that we want. And then later we can take control over what is it that we like, so that we can like a whole lot of stuff that we used to hate. Okay, so the first step of the teacher Samapada in that regard would be to see things that we're clinging to and recognizing that I can let go of that right now. And then later when it comes up again, mm -hmm. we don't have to take it all the way to the clinging. We can stop it at just, I want it. I want money. And in fact, it's the clinging that I often use this expression. But in the case of money, it's this. This is how we cling. We've got ourselves by the throat. We were worried about money. Or in fact, the whole point was, was that we got into that position because we wanted something. So now we're really clinging to it. So if we could recognize that, we could stop wanting so much. If we don't want so much, then We've got enough money. So make our um, wants few. 
This is what the Buddha refers to as the four requisites. Just enough that are required. Don't go below the poverty line. Have adequate housing. And it's easy enough to find free adequate housing. A lot of people don't. A lot of people live in a tent on uh, some side street in L.A., and that's not adequate housing. But adequate housing is available. Just enough food. You don't have to go out to a restaurant. Just enough. Just adequate clothing. We don't have to follow the fashions. The clothing that we bought last year is good enough. We'll wear it next year, too. And the medicines, just enough. We need some ointments, some salves, take care of the skin, eat healthy, live healthy. So that's all that we have to worry about is just the basic requisites. And when we got those filled, we don't have to worry about it anymore. We got it made. And life is easy. And you'll always have more money than you need. You don't need anything. <laughs> yeah, but I already kind of lived that yeah, way. Yeah, but I hear a yeah, but in there. <laughs> Sorry, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. All I heard so far was yeah, but. I know, but I, I already kind of live very basic. I just live in a... I have a room in a monastery. I I don't really spend that much money. Um, and yeah, you're right. Like when I do work, um, at least in a Great. programming job, I congratulations. So, what's your question? Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah okay whatever it is and however how hard you work you're still not satisfied you still want questions I want more I want more I want more and here you are telling me look how hard I've done I've done this and I've done that and my expenses are low and I'm still worried about money yeah yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can change that too. It's just an attitude change is all it is. Mm -hmm. If you've gotten yourself to a carefree life, why don't you enjoy it as if you were carefree instead of still worried like you were, you know, up two, three, four all day long because of all the things you had to buy. Now, if you don't have to buy anything, congratulate yourself for that and sit down and enjoy the fact that you could be a cheap driver. <laughs> it really is not hard. This is a simple task. But we have to practice coming out of that dissatisfied state of mind into being satisfied. We have to practice it over and over and over again. Because you're even with all the stuff that you are doing successfully, you're doing a whole lot of stuff and that's great, but you won't congratulate yourself. It's not enough. You're still worried. So now let's change it from you got from there to there. Now let's go from here to hear. From being dissatisfied with what you're doing to get your life straightened out into being satisfied with what you're doing. What you've done is good enough. Why make any more rules about it? Looking for it should be this, it should be that. It's good enough like it is. Okay. Is that so hard? I mean, you look like you're really struggling. 
yeah, I kind of am. I am struggling now. Uh -huh. It's just that. Ah, <sighs> yeah. Oh, finally, <laughs> now I heard it right. Finally, the exhaust valve opens. <laughs> the engine just started up. You ever seen a big caterpillar tractor, a big diesel engine, when it first fires up, the first thing it does is let off a really built exhaust smoke. And I just saw you do that. <laughs> yeah. uh. <laughs> so, okay, but I think what's what's mostly in my way right now is... The is, the, is the ethics thing, huh? Like what, what is the ethics thing, the sila thing, the the workplace, how, how ethical it when is. When your mind is fit, when you don't want anything, your sila is perfect. When you recognize, so you're saying you're, that, that, that your mind, that your sila is not perfect. Recognize that your mind is not noble, because when okay, your but, mind is so, noble, you're behavior in this moment is perfect and you've got a long stretch about Siva is this big and I'm saying no Siva is little thing. Okay, so you're saying as the external work doesn't really matter, it's all about perfecting the Sila in your mind. It's about your noble attitude about life. Your noble attitude about finding dukkha to avoid it. To see clearly, to sidestep the issue, to stay out of problems, to stay out of suffering, rather than trying to fix it. You don't have to clean up the mess, just get out of its way. Don't get it all over you when you're trying to clean it up. It's another way of talking about it. sidestep those thoughts just say never mind <sighs> another outlet I saw that one too is okay. In fact, the question is, are you willing to put in the effort? Yeah, I'm more than willing to I've put in a lot of effort already. Yeah. Okay, you have been putting, I know you've been putting in a lot of effort. Where are you willing to put in the effort? Hey. There you are. Right. Okay, if you put in the right effort, then you can change your mind right now. Whatever it is that you're thinking about, you can throw that out. And do this just for five minutes a day. Or five minutes every hour, 12 hours a day. So what I'm asking for is just an hour a day, just chop up in little pieces. So that you can begin to remember to do this over and over and over and over again. Right now. Take control of your feelings. Feel the way you want to feel rather than the way feeling the way that you're in the habit of feeling, which is worried. Mm -hmm. Do this. You just said you could do it. So what are you worrying about now? Yeah, All right. Well, are we? Are we going to do this? Can We're you? We're going to do it. 
Yeah. We're going, oh, all right. Okay. All right. That's what I'm looking for. There's conversation. Yeah. And if you miss an hour, so what? But if you miss an hour and press it yourself, then you're missing a new opportunity. So don't think that this has got to be a hard and fast schedule. Some goal that you've got to make. But rather permission to take a few minutes out. Take a few minutes out every hour. Take a few minutes out and enjoy the heck out of it. The mind cleaned out. <laughs> Take a deep breath. And never mind. Oh, this is so nice. No money chasing me. There's 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 no quarters crawling up my socks. Got no worries at all about money or anything else. The walls are still standing. They're not closing in on me. Everything is okay. And so allow yourself to feel safe and comfortable and secure. For about five minutes an hour. Okay. Safe, comfortable, secure, Satisfied. Everything's okay. Everything's all right. Not a worry in the world. For the next five minutes, money's not going to run out. Isn't that nice? Wow. Just taking the deep breath and recognizing how nice it is right now. Well, just for five minutes. In fact, now it's down to four. And I can just sit here and just, oh, it feels so good. That is right where it was. I hadn't moved an inch. Everything's okay. <sighs> now we're down to three. So did we practice that way? It just enjoy the heck out of one minute, two minutes, or three minutes. After five minutes, it may get too boring. I mean, you can have as much joy as you can stand in five minutes. <laughs> but go ahead and let yourself have five minutes of real joy. Just Have a party inside. A five minute party. Man, do you have anything to say about all of this? Um no, I think you you sum it up well and uh I really recognize myself in Lawrence <laughs> at the, the beginning. And uh I well, I already know that you're practicing this way. It's just that the way that I'm expressing it is slightly differently, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's just take the time out during the day and feel really good. That's not going to cost you anything. Except perhaps your insanity. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it might cost you your anger. Yeah, it's practicing to to learn how to create uh, and be happy, and uh, and then when you apply it to work, for example, you you will be even more efficient and even more uh, uh, detached from the result, and so you can be even more uh, precise with what you do because you're not uh, having fear yes, or something. You're right. When we so bring joy, we also, in that regard of where we got this joy, was through paying attention and watching what's going on joyfully, then we can do anything better. 
because we're doing it joyfully, paying attention to it. We can even worry about money better. We could cut 60 minutes a day or an hour worried about money down to 55 quite happily. <laughs> and I'm just joking. It's a joke, fun. It's a joke. <laughs> But we can improve anything with joy and and watching what we're doing, mindfully observing. But the joy part takes some effort for everyone because we're in the habit of being unjoyful, right now, bad enough. Call a joke or two. My money is not going to cost. Uh, it's not going to cost you any money at all. Smile. <laughs> Best things in Best. life are free. The next bread don't cost a cent. The next smile doesn't cost you anything at all. <laughs> All right. Well, let's finish now. I think that this has been an interesting talk. Let's see if we can get something going here with it. Okay. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Practice foam, my friend. I will. Enjoy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> we'll see ya.